In this video um, for lesson 6.6, .6, we're going to be um, comparing measures and triangles using the hinge theorem. So we just need to um, know what the hinge theorem states. Um, it's, it's essentially saying that if you have two triangles, like we have in this picture here, and in the two triangles, you have two pairs of congruent sides. Notice segment HB has one tick mark and segment KD has one tick mark. There's one pair of congruent sides. Side HA has two tick marks and side KC has two tick marks as well. So there's our second pair of congruent tick, um, sides. So if two triangles have two pairs of congruent sides, um, you can look at their angles to determine which third side is smaller or larger. So the smaller angle will have the smaller side and the larger angle will have the larger side. So the hinge theorem says if two triangle, two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle, then the included angle of the first is larger than the included angle of the second then the third side of the first is longer than the third side of the second. So basically in this picture, these two segments are congruent. And since angle V is greater than angle R, the length of WX is also greater than the length of ST. And you can think about it the opposite way. If you know the side lengths, we have two pairs of congruent sides side AB is longer than side DE. So the angle that's in between the two congruent sides, angle C must be bigger or greater than angle F. So we're going to do some practice with this on page 192 in our student journal. Page 192. Our job is to complete each statement with less than, greater than or equal to. All right, and number one, we've got two triangles. Notice how this side is congruent in the two triangles, that's important. And this side is congruent. We can use the hinge theorem. And so what we wanna do to figure out if BC is less than, greater than or equal to EC, we're gonna look at the two angles and compare them. The angle across from BC, 35 degrees. 35 is less than 45 degrees. Therefore, side BC must be less than the length of side EF. Number two, again, we're comparing side BC and EF. To do that, we're gonna compare the angles that are in between the two pairs of congruent sides. 95 degrees, angle A, is greater than 20 degrees. So the length of BC must be greater than the length of EF. Number three, we're still comparing segment BC and EF. Notice this time, if I look at the two sides and the angle, these angles are equal. And if I think about back to chapter five, our triangle congruence theorems, this is an example of a side angle side congruence theorem. That means the two triangles are congruent. So again, if these two angles are equal, that must mean side BC is equal in length to EF. Number four, looking at our two triangles, we wanna compare angle A and angle D. Notice all three sides of the triangles are congruent to each other. We have one, two, three pairs of congruent sides. Think back to chapter five. 
This is a, an example of side, side, side. Therefore, that must mean angle A and D, which are corresponding angles, have to be equal. Number five, we're going to compare angle A and angle D again. So we're comparing these two angles. We're going to look at the side opposite them. We have two pairs of congruent sides, so we can use the hinge theorem. The length of BC, which is across from angle A, is 14. That is less than the length of EF, which is 16. That must mean that the measure of angle A is less than the measure of angle D. And number six, here's angle A, here's angle D. We're going to compare the side lengths in order to compare the angles. Nine is greater than a length of two. Therefore, angle A must have a measure greater than the measure of angle D. Number seven, we're going to compare line segment AB and line segment AC. I have one and two pairs of congruent sides. This is a reflexive property here. So in order to compare the side lengths, I need to compare the angle measures that are opposite these sides. Angle BDA has a measure of 145 degrees. That is greater than the measure of angle CDA, which is 135 degrees. Therefore, the length of AB must be greater than the length of AC. And number eight, when I'm looking at my segments here, I notice that the angles that they are opposite from are congruent. And if I look at these two triangles, I see an example of side angle side. This means the two triangles are congruent. So their corresponding sides, AB and CD, must be equal in length. And lastly, number nine, angle one is here and angle two is here. I notice I have one pair of congruent sides in these triangles. And since they share this side, here's another pair of congruent sides. So we can use the hinge theorem. So to compare the angle measures, we're going to compare the lengths of the sides. Angle one is across from the length side CD that has a length of 19. 19 is greater than 17, which is across from angle two. Therefore, the measure of angle one must also be greater than the measure of angle two.